Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Baking Breadly. Uh, this is actually my third video of today. <laughs> I'm kind of getting through these and I wanted to I wanted to try out using Travis and I said that in the last video but I didn't want to do it then because I was still talking about some other uh, parts of the site that we've developed. So this is going to be about integrating Travis and hopefully I'll be able to do it in this one video. And Travis is a way of, excuse me, is, is a way of testing, is a way of testing your sites to see if they work on the live system and they'll run a series of commands. It's basically the same commands that you run in the command line but it will do it via well not via on github on one of your branches and go yep that ran that worked on mine so it must work on the live site so send it up or it will just give you confirmation so let's try and implement it uh first thing i did do is i did actually go to the travis website travisci.org and what I did is uh, signed up and you sign in with github it's as simple as that so I'm just going to click sign in uh, I'm already signed in and what you can do is enable a project so let's have a look my repositories, you don't have any research set up with Travis CI. Why? Okay, account. So I think what I can do is I can enable ones in here. So I can enable this one, so that's Bradley. So that's turned on. And what are these settings in here? Build only if Travis.yaml is present build pushes build build pull requests yes mm, so I can see all the information here so I could see pull requests in here build history current okay I've got a little badge here. I wonder if I can... Oh, it doesn't have like, it's not giving it access. So I can't like push it to it. Oh, I wanted to do it like the Gitter and everything else. Settings. I wonder if it does it in the next one. So when we have to, when we do it. Okay, well, anyway. There's our local version. Uh, luckily, Jekyll has a whole page dedicated to Travis integration or continuous integration. It's, as they've more widely named it. So go to your profile, find the repository, turn it on, optionally configure the build by clicking on the wrench icon Further, further configuration happens in your .travis.yaml file. More details on that below. Right, so I'm going to copy that. And what I'm going to do now is going to do git check out b inter integrate travis ci and integrate is only one R. So we're on that. So git. I'm going to I'm going to create an empty Travis file on this branch to differentiate it. So new file. Dot Travis dot yaml. The file dot Travis dot yaml is now hidden. So I need to turn on show invisible files again. 
That's cool. Where is he? There it is. Right, okay. Git status. Git add. Whoops, did a comma instead of a dot. Git commit am creates initial Travis file. And we have a issue here, issue number 29 requesting for this. So 29. Cool. And I'm now going to do git push origin in, in integrate Travis CI. Okay. Uh, get pull. <laughs> it comes up with this thing. And I'm like so lazy, I just copy the the command. Git branch set upstream to origin. Great. So now what I'm going to do is check out this branch. And I'm going to I'm going to do a pull request immediately. You see what what I'm going to do is and this was, as mentioned before, in a much earlier one, I think it was like episode one, like two or something like that, where I was talking about creating issues as a way to summarize what your plans are for your feature integration. So like if you're adding in a sidebar or a blogging system or something like that into a site, you would create a branch. You no, know, you would create an issue and then entail it all in there. Well... When I spoke about that, there was a kind of deeper theory of, uh, not theory, but like a deeper um, method to it where you create create a branch and then you immediately make it a pull request. Like as soon as you've started work, like you would there would be some way to initiate it. And then you would create a pull request. And because of how Git works, you keep pushing to that um, or how GitHub works, I should say, with pull requests. Um, you keep pushing to that branch and it just keeps adding on to the pull request. So you would then create this list of things that you're going to be integrating into it and then you would just say approve or not approve and you could get other people to say, yep, I want this merged or no. And you know there would be several people that can review it as you're adding stuff in and you can keep adding stuff Um without having to do a pull request and then cancelling it and then doing a pull request again and then cancelling it. You just kind of sit it in a pull request and approve it or not approve it. So what we should do um, is um, change this to Travis integration. And, the list, and then we create a list of to-dos in here as well just like we did with the issues. So create Travis.yaml file. Whoops. Um, add options to, to file. Test file corrects work works correctly works correctly and that's it so we can cross this one off by putting an x in it and yes so we create that as a pull request into the master so create pull request and this is in progress assigned to my to myself 
And this is where Travis would actually appear, like in this kind of section here. It would go, uh, oh, this is working. Um, merge it in or something like that. So what we need to do is we need to set up a file. We need to put into the Travis.yaml file or dot Travis.yaml file all the options and how it wants to test the Jekyll site and what indeed what branches to test on as well because we don't want it testing on every single branch because there's some things that we just like we're just experimenting with we don't want it to be testing it all the time we want to be quite accurate in where we're testing it so it's preparing us for you know if there's an error in something that we're putting live so the aim is to test the master branch before we put it into github pages branch so yes, let's continue on with this. Uh, the test script, the simplest test script simply runs Jekyll build and ensures that Jekyll doesn't fail to build the site. It doesn't check the resulting site, but it does check. It does ensure things are built properly. When testing Jekyll output, there is no better tool than HTML proofer. So this is a, a gem, I believe. Yes gem version and it tests uh, test sites I, I guess test your rendered HTML files to make sure they're accurate mm. the HTML proofer executable Sorry. Uh, when testing the Jekyll output, there's no better tool than HTML Proofer. This tool checks for your testing site to ensure all links and images exist. Utilize it either with the convenient HTML proof command or write a Ruby script which utilizes the gem. And that's the kind of executable method of doing it. So I could run this in the command line, I guess. Some options can be specified by the command line switches. Da 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 da, check out the readme. Uh, I just want to check it with Travis. I don't want to check it like locally. And we'll be checking everything to the end of the earth. We're just, we just want to, I just want to get it set up so then we can expand on it later. Uh, but the core stuff is there. This file is used to configure your Travis builds. Because Jekyll is built with Ruby and requires Ruby gens to install, we use Ruby language build environment. Below is a sample Travis file, and what follows is an explanation of each line. So I'm going to be super lazy, and I am actually going to copy the whole thing. <laughs> Yep, of course, it's a YAML file. So um, it's quite nice that they've explained it in here. And I have read through this. And I think I understand everything that's going on in there. So I'm going to review, run through this myself. So obviously, it's a, a Ruby language. So Ruby is the language. And then RVM is, I believe that's like a version manager system. So that's why it says 2.1. So that's the version of Ruby that we want to be testing against. And then the script is what the script is we want to run. And because, uh, because, um, because our, sys our, our script is so simple, we just need this command here, which is pretty much the same build that was script we use or the command we use locally, so you know, Jekyll build, but then we've got and use the HTML proof, and that we want to check on site or the, the root directory slash underscore site, which is where it's built. And while this is a Travis file that we could test locally, um, we're just going to test it on the actual on the actual site. On the actual, on actual GitHub, so this is what Travis will look at, and indeed, 
GitHub will look at by using that HTML proof command. No, I guess I guess what um, Travis does is run the site locally as well. So it must just run it, go, yep, that works, and probably tests it against the gems that I've stated in there with HTML proof and Jekyll build. Maybe they just have all the gems um, accessible. They just have everything there. And one of them is HTML proof and the other one's Jekyll. So yeah, so it's irrelevant what uh, GitHub's running. It's just their running things. So they say, if it works for us, it must work for you. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, we'll put that in and hopefully that will work. That's one of the things that I'm a bit unsure about whether it will work. Anyway, uh, capital B. So branch whitelist, so they've got branches and then only these two. And it says GH pages. So test the GH pages branch. I am going to, I'm going to, okay, I'll leave master. I'll leave GitHub pages, but I'll add master to that list. Let's get some kind of tidying up. Test the GitHub pages branch, test. So test the master branch, which is used as the development branch. Okay. And the last thing on here is this um, use system libraries true, and then it speeds up the HTML speeds up the installation of the HTML proofer. So it must be kind of a clever little trick command there. Um, so yeah, that is it. Um, no, it's not. There is one other thing, and it's this, which I saw at the end when reading through all of this. Um, Travis bundles uh, bundles all gems in a vendor directory on its build servers. So we want to put this in here to stop Jekyll building whatever Travis creates. So I'm going to put that in before we uh, do anything silly. I'm going to put Travis files and do well, it's got it in square brackets. Vendor. Okay. So let's do git status. And those are our two files that we've modified. So I'm gonna do git commit uh, config. And the message shall be excludes vendor directory which is created by Travis. And then I'm gonna do git commit. Well, I'm gonna do git status, git, and then because I've only got one file there, so I'll do git am adds basic Travis options from the JekyllRB.com website. Uh, and I'm going to put resolves issue resolves hash, and was it 29? I am going to put 29. So we're integrating with Travis, whether it works or not is a different story. So we've got Travis integration here. So if this is approved, then we move it, we put it into done, and then we have actually got Travis integration. Uh, so yes. And I'm going to do git push. Mm, 
This is going to be interesting. Oh, interesting. We've actually got the little merge with caution. Details. Huh? So this means Travis integration is actually working. And now it's loading the page to say what we've got wrong with the site. Which is pretty cool. I hope it's nothing too painful. How are we doing for time? 20 minutes, great. 20 minutes in and we've already got Travis integration. Oh, is it doing? Oh, it's doing things. That's why it says merge with caution. Mm. Let's go back over to Waffle. It says merge with caution. Caution. Waiting to hear back. Oh, failed. Oh no. <laughs> what did it fail on? Will it tell me? It says one error and I can't see. The command Jekyll build exited with one two seven. Hmm, okay. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a paste error <laughs> to see what happens. See if this comes up with anywhere. Hmm. Just seeing if they've done the similar thing. Ah! Well, that's why, because we used Jekyll build. And if you look in our Travis file, we've got Jekyll build and then HTML proof. And we haven't got our bundle exec prefix, which is because we're using bundles. So, or we're using bundle gems. So we need to change this to bundle exec and then bundle exec as well. That makes sense, okay. Okay. This guy's helped us out. Thanks. Daryl Chan. I wonder if he's on GitHub. Huh. Oh well. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for your help and for writing it down. Git status. Git commit. AM to make sure, uh, amends, Jekyll, build command in Travis, whoops, Travis file. Git push.
Look at that, it auto reloads. I'm gonna close that and this is, I guess this is the, ah, right. Master. Oh, I guess that's the branch we're testing it on. So now we're just waiting, waiting for Travis to start running. Is that what it says in here? Waiting to hear about 778263B. Is that the commit hash? It is the commit hash. Oh, oh, it started. Now, where's that command that we did before where it errored? Look at this. This is just pretty much what happens in the command line. It's like a robot looking for your website. <laughs> it's like a robot developer. Yep, the Jekyll site map, Liquid, yep. These are all the gems that come with, like bundled inside of Jekyll. Neat, bitters. <laughs> oh. What's that? Invalid date, zero, 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 post, vendor, Ruby 2.1, does not have a valid date in the file name. That's weird. Failed. Hmm. I wonder if this has been uh, reported. Yeah, we do search, then it stops that. But I'd put that exclude in there, didn't I? Did I put it incorrectly? Oh. Maybe. Maybe because this vendor thing is not in the master branch, maybe. I spelt vendor correctly, haven't I? Yeah. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted to merge it in and then do something else to test it instead of 
um, wondering about something else because this looks like the same error that that, that guy got in the um, in this error here he's like process exited with status one it says process like exit with one done your build exited with one gems posts and then yeah welcome to jekyll it's like that must be the the stuff that's like in the other files like hidden away um let's mer let's merge it in and then do an additional test So now we've merged that, um, we can, we can't test that. So we've merged that into master. I'm wondering what the best way to do this. We don't want to delete this branch because we can use this branch to then test against um, another change, like we can do another pull request from this branch. So maybe if I just do this, testing Travis and put this in a SQL spot there. Um, Git status git commit am adds comment to config to test travis is working correctly c hash 32 for more it push. So this hasn't reopened this, nope. Why does this have no labels? I thought it would have a label. Development. Yeah. Maybe that's Waffle being clever. Let's create a pull request. New pull request, and we'll compare our Travis thing. So all we've done is that. Uh, test Travis. Uh, we'll put this under a bug. Sign to myself. So, can we go back to Bradley? Back to my account. How are we doing for time? 34 minutes. Fingers crossed this works and it was merely just a building issue. So, I can't really get to the thing from here. Yeah, there we go, we can do it this way. Fingers crossed. Uh, 
Oh dear. Failed. <sighs> oh dear. Well, we've got Vendor right here. Maybe Mr. Uh... Hmm. Where's that gentleman's website? Gone. Hmm. Maybe that is it. Maybe that's the one. Hello. In your YAML. You see, he's got that there. I'm going to put the HTML proofer into the uh, gem file anyway, because we do need it. In fact, I'm going to put it up here, because they're more planned. Has he got his uh, file that he did to test this with? I'm just interested to know why exclude Vendor is in there. Let's test, let's, let's try. Why not? Restart build, download log, remove log. Okay, let's put exclude vendor directory from build process from Jekyll build process. Cool. Git commit am adds HTML proofer to gem gem file. Whoops, and moves vendor ex exclude option into Travis file git push <laughs> and the cool thing is we uh, we have a already got a pull request on the go so we can just keep keep bashing it until it does it and I really, I really want this to work before this video is go, um, before this video is over, because then you can see it actually working, as opposed to, as opposed to it just like failing. And you will never know. Well, I will tell you in the next video if it doesn't work, and we can't do it in the time that we have. But I would like to get it there.
you are trying to install in deployment mode after changing your gem file rundle bundle install elsewhere and add the updated gem file to version control ah errored so we need to update our, ge our lock gem file so bundle install And this will run the gem file and see HTML proofer and then add it to the lock gem file or gem file dot lock. Git status, git commit am runs bundle command to update gem file dot lock with HTML proofer addition git push You kind of feel impatient with it, like kind of like it has to go to all these different places and like fly around different servers. But then you think, well, it's flying around different servers all at the same time. You can't really like, you can't really complain about the speed. Click on here. Seems to like click on like. Oh, this is just gen everybody like recent. Is that recent as in like people I know? No, just everybody in the world. Started. It started. That's the failed one. Oh, come on, please. Failed. Did it again. Ah. Oh. Hmm, maybe that does need to be in. In here. I hope that this like because we've got two in here, it doesn't like exclude one and then not the other. I guess if we do. Um, our Jekyll command to build, which I can copy from here. We can check whether it works, still works with the uh, build commands. Auto. Do we have to use watch on there? Oh no, we do Jekyll serve. Mm. Oh look, yeah look, it's ignoring it. It's not ignoring them, so this redefines it. So if we do this, cancel that. Stop. Mm. 
It's rebuilding everything in here. There we go, that's better. Oops, I've already got, I've got two build commands running at the same time. Okay, git status. Git commit am moves uh, moves vendor exclusion moves vendor ex vendor exclude back into config git push oh dear Hmm. There we go. That's better. The labels keep disappearing and reappearing. Let's close all these light links. Details. See if this guy's got any like tricks up his sleeve. See, so he's got two point two there. But we had all the things in different orders. Oh, I started again. I may change the, the Ruby version to see if this guy knows a little bit more. Failed. Same thing again. Let's change it. How are we doing for time? Okay, when it gets to the 50 minute mark, I might stop this. Git commit am changes uh, rvm version in Travis file to 2.2. Git push. this dot Harry your site could not be built invalid date da 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 do another quick search on this <laughs> Just get looped round to the second the second one. Ah. They got it in the square braces. Ah. <gasps> Get ignore. Well, no, that's going to... I've already got the... I've already got... I, I should already have that in my get ignore, he said. I don't. Interesting. Failed. 
failed. And did it use 2.2? It did. Okay, I'm going to have a play around with this and then hopefully I can explain it in the next one and resolve it. And uh, hopefully we will... Uh, we can press on. <laughs> uh, hopefully it's like a really minor detail. If not, then this may be like a wasted... Uh, a wasted inclusion but I will see you in the next video with the answer hopefully so see you then hello uh, I just ended episode 15 uh, I'm adding this onto the end it's just there and it passed and you know what the thing was this don't do this do this so just exclude the normal vendor directory. Uh, the This issue here, I, I think the formatting he's, uh, Parker has written here may be something to do with like uh, global excludes or it, there is some way of, of doing that. I, uh, it could be something to do with just YAML formatting. But because I've done it with uh, hyphenated list, then I needed to just do vendor. And it passed just here, ran 14 files. I even tested it locally. You can run the same command locally, bundle exec Jekyll build and bundle exec HTML proof to site. And you run it. And if you look, you get the same view. So this is, this is your command line. This is like a robot doing being your command line and it, it passed and if we go back to here uh, possibly if we refresh the page all is well Travis CI build passed <laughs> right well that that wasn't that wasn't too scary I didn't want this video to be completely useless so I'm, a, I'm sorry if this was a bit long but at least now we know how to do Travis integration with a Jekyll site. Uh, so yes, and like I said before, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.